Okay, for seventh grade science, we are next going to be looking at life and cells. So we're going to start off by talking about, and you should have discussed in class already, what does it mean to be alive? So you might have asked yourself, well, being alive makes me really happy and stuff like that. But no, seriously, if you picked up something on the ground and you're like, what is this? What would it have to do for you to actually think say oh my gosh this is th this thing is alive right and what would it be not doing that would really confuse you into thinking that this thing uh, might be alive but it might be dead blah 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 there's all these things so uh you've discussed a little bit about this already but i think we're going to go a little bit further into it by looking at some of the characteristics of life that you guys should know about you guys should know about so continue on looking at uh, what this is the first thing is made up of cells things that are living at least most scientists agree if something is made up of cells then we think it's probably alive well what are cells we've talked about particles and things like that so we're gonna we're gonna be looking at cells in a lot more detail but for now cells are the smallest units of life smallest units of life and here you can see a bunch of pictures that's a sperm cell right there that's plant cells we have red blood cells these are i think there's an artist representation of some nerve cells some skin cells you're going to try scraping some of these out of your mouth and i think this grandma is pinching some off of his face right there um, there is a an exception to this you know that viruses can actually make you sick, but people who study biology and any kind of scientists out there, they've had a lot of trouble trying to define um, if a virus is considered alive or not. But if we follow this, that all living things have to be made up of cells, then this doesn't actually fit into that category. So we cannot say that viruses are alive because based on this definition here. So viruses are not made up of cells, and so they can make us sick though. And check this out, here's a little cell right here that's being invaded by tons and tons of these viruses. So a virus is just basically some DNA, some genetic material surrounded by some protein. And they have to actually uh, invade a cell, a living cell in, in order to survive basically. But because it's not made up of a cell on its own, we say, that it is not considered alive. Cells come in many shapes and forms. I think you understand that. And the basics of what a cell actually uh, is includes a nucleus and a cell membrane. You're gonna see this repeated later and we're gonna talk specifically about what the nucleus and cell membrane do. Okay, that's number one. Living things are made up of cells. So the first thing you're gonna ask yourself when you pick up something on the floor, could this be made up of cells? If it is, then it might be alive. But then you've got to ask yourself, is there any kind of movement? Movement. And uh, here you can see a little video of uh, amoeba. An amoeba is a single-celled living organism. It's actually moving and changing the shape of its membrane as it crawls through uh, a Petri dish. Um, Jack Bauer, this is my one of my heroes. Okay, he's not real, but he moves around a lot. This guy moves around a lot. Clouds move around a lot, but does that mean that they are alive though? So be careful about that, all right? Go back to question one. Is it made up of cells? How about this rat? Is it alive? Yes, unfortunately, they are alive and crawling around my feet. Do plants move? Does this plant move? Do you recognize this plant? Search Venus flytrap on YouTube and see what you can find out. But plants, are they moving in the way that we think they should be moving if they're alive or not. Well, are plants alive? Ask yourself that question. Remember, go back to question number one. What else? Living things. Oh, here's a little video of that Venus flytrap. Take a look at this little guy here. Whoa, he's so cute. He's hanging out. Looks pretty safe, right? Hanging out there. Safe. Something must be sweet. Some nectar. Oh, let's go and take a look inside oh yeah that looks really safe right there with all those spikes that's fine there must be something yummy there some kind of snack this video may go on for a long time but anyways let's just let's just watch for a little bit uh you can take a look you can pause and come back and fast forward this little critter's obviously looking for something let's see if this plant has the snacks that this little critter wants and oh boy oh boy exciting you should fast forward. This is going to take another minute or so. Oh, 
Looks like it's slippery in there. Why would the plant have a slippery surface if it has a little bit of sweet, you know, good stuff to try to attract this plant? It's still hanging around. I mean, if I was a little baby fly, this is a place I would go to to play. It looks totally safe with all those spikes. Yes. Anything good? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Did you see that? Something horrible just happened. That is not a place that I would send my little baby flies to play. Was that an example of response? I think so. That plant responded really quickly and I, don't, I, I wanna cry, but uh, okay, I can't watch this anymore. Let's move on. Responsiveness, living things respond in some way. So this particular plant responds in a way. Here's a little guy. Oops, he just disappeared behind. Uh, stimulus is an activity that causes a response. These plants are growing towards the light. That's a response. These guys are gonna start punching each other. So, I mean, are they responding to each other? Is there a stimulus and a response there? Okay, that's one type of living thing. Let's see what else there is. Um, complex chemical activities. This is another thing that living things do. They have complex chemical activities. What does that mean? It means there are chemical reactions going on in their bodies or in their cells that help them to do certain things like convert uh, food into energy. We eat glucose, we turn it into energy. So a nice way to say it is the sum of all chemical activities occurring inside the body. Oops, what just happened there? And metabolism is another fancy word for that. The sum of all chemical activities occurring inside the body. Let me add another thing here. Perhaps we could say uh, photosynthesis is an example of metabolism. Photosynthesis. This is what plants do to make food. Uh-oh. Reproduction. Reproduction. I know you've been waiting for this particular piece. Oh, look at this. What's happening right here? There are little cells that are reproducing. This is how bacteria make babies. I want to say with each other, but no, they basically make babies by themselves. This is called asexual reproduction, or another fancy word is binary fission. Seems that all living things are able to do some kind of reproduction. They can make more of themselves, sometimes on their own. Oh my gosh, look at all that. Sometimes on their own or sometimes with other organisms. Humans, we cannot do this on our own. We have to do this with other people all right so there's all these other problems like valentine's day and all these weird things that go on marriage and stuff like that we can't just do it like bacteria unfortunately uh the terms are asexual and sexual asexual means uh can produce babies on your own sexual means requires a partner in order to uh produce a baby and we're gonna see uh that there are some pretty interesting slugs out there that know how to do this. Oh, look at that, there they are, leopard slugs. Find out about that. How do spiders reproduce? Find out, sexually or asexually. So that's reproduction. And finally, one more thing that helps us determine if things are actually alive, growth and development. I don't know why that's there. He's just being a mean little boy. Tadpoles, everything that lives is considered living goes through some stages of growth and development. They get more complex or they get bigger. Even Nene got taller. Even Ashley got taller. They grow up. And unfortunately for me, by the time they turn to eighth grade, they will all be taller than me, which is really sad, but that's okay. Uh, growth and development. This one's pretty easy to understand. Humans develop, humans grow. That, that is one characteristic of living things. Can you remember? So next time you go and you encounter something, you, you're not sure if that thing might be living, ask yourself a few questions. Does that thing grow and develop? Are there any signs of reproduction going on? Are there any signs of complex chemical activities that may be happening? Is there any kind of responsiveness being demonstrated? Maybe I should poke it and see what happens. Is there any type of movement and is it possible that whatever I'm looking at or holding or observing is made up of cells? If the answers to any of those questions is yes, or better yet, if the answers to all of those questions are yes, then you are probably looking at something that is living. Okay, have a nice day. Goodbye.